This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How you going? How goes it? Well, it's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, we, we could say that. So, yeah. folks, I don't know if you, <clears throat> if you noticed, but there in our little uh, intro video, you might have noticed a slight change to the URL. And that is, mm. it's finally, finally just blockadepinball.com. Not blockadepinball.com Not slash, slash episodes. Yes. Why, you may be wondering, why did That's they it. finally, after all this time, put a proper, easy to sp uh, spit out URL rather than have that episodes? Well, Jared. Well, yeah, well, something happened this week. So I was, uh, you know, on Tuesday, I thought, oh, it's well, I'm well overdue for getting episode 220 done. So I um, got on to um, Medium to put up the new show post, you know, like we always do, linking out to all the goodness that we put into the show. And then I log on and see a big, scary red banner. Dun, saying dun, that dun. <laughs> And the red banner says that your account is in violation of the medium rules or under investigation. Um, and I went, huh? yeah. what do we do? Very <laughs> curious. Um, we post and have been posting the exact same kind of content for years. For about two years. <laughs> for about two years now on medium um, when we switched over last time. And... And I don't know why they think that we are in violation. We receive, we certainly receive no email or no messaging from. Yeah, Medium. I was going to say, you know, at least <clears throat> you'd think that we'd have the courtesy of Medium sending us an email saying, "Hey, we hey, you we got, pulled your site you because." Goofed. Yeah. No. Yeah, you done goof because of this, this, and this reason. Like, if they had done that, I would have gone, "Oh, fair call. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I don't read the Medium terms from cover to cover because, like, who ever does that?" Um, <laughs> I mean, it's so, not like they have a YouTube policy, you know, with the violation strikes or anything. You know, there's, I don't know, it's it's very weird, but to say the least, um, bye-bye, medium. <laughs> yeah, that's a polite way of putting it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so medium is no longer a thing for the show. Um, what I had to do is, uh, and I've, it's kind of, I'm, I'm looking at this with the, uh, serendipitous lens on but <clears throat> it's sort of good that medium did this because i've been sort of thinking for a while that medium were going to go down this path of like restricting things and being basically dicks about it um so what i did is uh set up uh, a brand new website in three days so <laughs> <laughs> it's like man uh, Magic, yes. Well, it's magic when you do, you know, when you finish your day job and then work up until midnight each night. I was going to say, meanwhile, days, I'm getting messages from done. Jared constantly going, oh, God, it's not doing this. It's not, these aren't transferring. And it's, why is it fighting me on this? And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's the it's the internet. <laughs> so I, I managed to uh, use this system um, without going into too much boring detail, although please message me if you like the idea of it. Um, and we can talk off 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 the airs, but um, the, what I did is I set up a static site, um, and it just it, it all uses um, ASCII doc syntax, and which is what I use in my professional job to write technical documentation. I just picked a theme and using Jekyll to set up a static site, and then there's this service called Netlify, which allows you to um, continuously build uh, one of these static site websites as soon as you commit files up to a branch in Git. So I've set that up. It's all wired up. Every time I commit a new show to um, the main branch of the, the repo, it will just build the website for me. And I've been, it's like, once I got the theme decided on and did some tweaks to it and everything, um, I just started converting episodes. So on that subject, it's probably worth knowing that I'm going to have to draw a line in the sand where I stop converting episode show notes over because... If you think about it, our show is sort of like a weekly or fortnightly review show about all the news happening at the moment. So it's quite temporal in nature. And 
except for those shows that deal with interviews, like all the Mel interviews and going back in time, the interviews with Bobby King from Farsight, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> those ones are probably more time stampable or sort of like retrospective. But really the the sort of day, day-to-day, uh, week-to-week or fortnight-to-fortnight fortnight shows that we do don't really have much meaning uh, six months down the line. Like they're sort of, you know, news shows. So I'm probably going to not, convert all 219 show notes <laughs> over because I don't think anyone's I, I don't think anyone's going to go back to episode 10 and listen to us for example so you know so well here's here's what I would love absolutely love because I don't have the time for this <laughs> mm. no but my god it would be so awesome if you know one of our fine listeners went back in time especially with the all the youtube stuff is up by the way the youtube stuff didn't mm. change um but yeah, that's, i would that's love cool. to see like a a super cut a, a massive edit of just like i don't know some 10 minute long video of just edits of throughout the time that'd be kind of interesting be kind of cool wouldn't it yeah just, especially seeing it from somebody and an, an out well i shouldn't say an outsider but from uh Rather than us who create the show, but from you who watch the show, uh, it's just one of those things. If yeah, anybody, it would be if anybody's feeling saucy, <laughs> or really bored. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Which, yeah, so that's that's the thing. So, brand new website. I don't know if you can actually um, bring it up, Chris, but it's uh, where where can I find the new website, Chris? Uh, BlockadePinball.com. <clears throat> Easy as that. Yeah. So, yeah. He, and, and you know, you may be wondering why did they put BlockadePinball.com slash episodes again well, i could tell thanks, you about medium that. yeah so i think this is probably i've been trying to th- work through the reasons why medium did what they did and i have a feeling i've worked it out so recently medium allowed you to actually use custom domains again on your medium publication and this was <clears throat> probably around i have to say about one or two months ago now but they re-enabled this feature so what we were doing is we were using Rebrandly, which is a URL rebranding service, to basically rebrand the Black A Pinball podcast publication on Medium um, with blackapinball.com for such episodes. So you could just jump to the, the main site because there was no way of actually doing it. When I when I originally switched over to Medium, there was documentation out there you could use custom domains. And then when I actually converted all the posts over, I went, uh-oh, yeah, well, like there's no way of doing switch. that. <laughs> Jared, <clears> Jared was... messaged me back then. He goes, I've already put in all this time, and now I'm finding out it's not going to work that way. What do I do? And I was yeah. just like, ah, just go with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we, just, we we worked out this solution, and it worked for, well, nearly two and a half years, I think, since we've been using Medium. But they've cracked down on it now because, you know, it's five dollars a month to use that custom domain thing. Yeah. Um, so, and have a guess how much it costs with the system I'm using now. Mm, nothing. Free. Nothing. Yay! Free. We like free. 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 <laughs> so that's the right price for us. Yes, because our show is the uh, the cash cow, isn't it? Um... Oh, absolutely. We get so much money from sponsorship and donations each, so, each month. So we've just spent you know, <clears throat> the, the last uh, you know five minutes here plugging and dissing. So dissing medium. Plugging, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know, what is it that we plugged? Did we plug anything, Jared? Uh, plug the static site system that we we're using. And so the people who, well, I guess, you know, the, the new technology I'm using to do this. Right. Because um, it deserves a shout out. It's very good. Right. So speaking of shout outs, though, I want to point this out. So our opening video, that was something that uh, we put together on a site called RenderForest. Mm. And we paid uh, a fee to be able to download that video um, and you know have it in 1080p, and it's ours, mm. no watermark. We can do with it what we want. When I yeah. signed up for it and built it, I was under the impression that we would be able to edit because I was specifically worried about that URL. What yeah. if the URL changes? Can we edit, or are we going to have to buy a new video? Yeah. So now that the URL worked, I was like, all right, let's go back to Render Forest and... and do that edit and so easy enough found my account found the video went in there was able to go push edit put in the uh the new url and then i could not for the life of me figure out how to upload and download that and everything that i was clicking kept on bringing up pricing of which the pricing has changed since 
we did this two years ago. Um, to probably a lot more. <laughs> no, it's actually less. Go figure. Oh, is it? Oh, but, there you go. That's but more. it's less because it's a one-time feature. When I oh. the thing that I bought was, I believe, unlimited edits to oh. your to your uh, your not necessarily not your logo, but to any text that was going to pop up. Oh, I see. So I <clears> was <throat> like, well, shoot, how do I do this? I don't know if it's even valid. I don't. I there was no way of bringing up the documentation of what my our you know, invoice mm. said. So I fired off an email to their support. Within 10 minutes, I got a response saying, uh, okay, we hear what you're saying. And yeah, that's, you know, it's been two years since you've activated that. So we'd kind of archived, but don't worry. We brought it back up here. Check this. Boom. I click on the link, checked it. Sure enough, it was all edited, ready for download. Downloaded oh, nice. it. Nice. I mean, like, it was quick response. I was blown away Ten by how fast. Is exceptional. That's yeah. exceptional service from Render Forest. Yeah. So, so big shout out to them. Render Forest, even though they don't sponsor us either. But uh, right. they, but hey, they made us have a nice little video at the front there. So and I was glad that our money at least uh, was still valid <laughs> and was That's allowing really us good. to do that. Yeah. Because you know that was two years ago now. So yes. you know a lot of businesses will go, yeah, that was two years ago, mate. Like, and, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll tell you guys out there, um, if you're Doing shows, if you want to do, uh, you know, have that kind of video. I've seen, because believe me, when we were doing the logo, I went through every single video. Oh, yeah. It was a long we, we slog. Had a, we had a look at a lot of different options. And that's the thing. Like, Render Forest has so many different logo animations yeah, yeah. like that. But in it's the really process cool. of doing that, there are a lot of videos out there that I go, hey, they used Render Forest. Render Forest. <laughs> uh, I've even <laughs> seen... The same intro that we do, but obviously with a different logo of some other thing. I was like, "Hey, that's ours," but they didn't have the same music, so uh -huh. it's 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 a lot of plug and play. It's super easy, but I just want to say, hey, you know, they they did us a solid today and didn't have and to. I was really I was honestly it. expecting it to be, nope, too bad that was old, you know, and it wasn't. Yeah, so I would have expected that too. I would probably would have just gone, oh yeah, well, it's two years old. I'll just pay again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you're right. It never hurts to ask, does it, with these things? Because yes. you never know what the response is going to be. Yes. Um, other thing, don't worry, folks. We'll get to pinball. We yeah, it's we coming. Yeah, we haven't done this kind of thing in a long time. So let's get no, this that's out right. of our Long system. intros. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, the other thing that uh, I've learned my lesson this week. Oh. So I finally decided to retire the office chair. Oh, you're right. Yes. And. Uh, Mainly because it was squeaking a lot and it was driving my wife nuts whenever anybody, <laughs> me or my son, were sitting in it because it would just like, <laughs> like any kind of movement that you did on it. I was like, all right, if I've had the chair for like 15 years, sure. It doesn't owe you much. <laughs> no, no, maybe it's, maybe it's time for toast. So, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I go, I'm like, oh, let's go on to Amazon, see what they got. And I'm like, hey, look, hey, who, hey, there's a chair. It's only sixty-five bucks. Bam! That looks you like it. that looks like what I want. Yeah, let's go. Let's order that. Yeah. Ordered it up. Got it. Up, you know, showed up two days later. Built it. Sat in it and went. Ugh. That's not good. No. It, why is it like wobbly side to side? And mm. why is it when I lean back, I feel like I'm about to fall over? And Oh, I don't like where it hits in my back, and damn it, I knew I should have just not trusted the internet and tried a seat in person. <laughs> yep, that's that's right, eh? Like with the stuff like seats, and I think shoes as well. They're really a retail purchase, aren't they? They're like not really something you can go online and do. You've got to really try them out. Well, the thing is, I'm a it's quite individual, and and I've always been. Go to brick and mortar. Go to brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. like internet shopping, except for, for things that are easily internet shoppable. But yeah. a lot of the things, in my opinion, I much rather want to be able to see it, pick it, pull it, you know. Touch it. Touch it. Take it. Right. You know, even if it's mm -hmm. just because I'm like, oh, this one has a crease at the bottom of the box. I don't want that one. You know, just so it, that I can see yeah. that kind of thing. And uh, if anybody's been following, you know, at games shipments or arcade one-up shipments of their pinball machines... 
You've seen a good reason why people don't like internet shopping because boxes are coming damaged or boxes aren't showing up at all. <laughs> um, or boxes have forklifts gone straight exactly. through Exactly. You, know? you know, that yeah. you could see when you were buying it in retail. So, yep. yeah, I'm... I the, the, the chair manufacturer would include a little note saying, hey, if for any reason you don't like the purchase, instead of leaving us just negative feedback, give us an email and we'll try and make things right. So yeah. I'm going to give them the chance to make mm -hmm. things right. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see <laughs> Ma what happens. Mainly because even if I return the chair, my little excursion today basically told me that any chair that I would buy is going to be twice the price of what this one was. So, yeah. And the thing is that chairs are like shoes for me. Like you, you buy shoes, particularly for like shoes I buy. Like I'm in these shoes like every day like they're my daily driver shoes right so i spend the money on them because i know that if i don't it's gonna it's it's a false economy right yeah. it's the same with chairs like if you're in that chair for even five hours a day it's got to be a comfortable chair because that's your connection to the floor um and you kind of just got to spend the money and like buy the best you can with the budget you've got and and just do what you can to get like the best chair you can because it's going to be like you say it's going to be there for 15 years probably so you got to be happy with it like yeah. really happy with it. so stay tuned for chair journey and Ch chair because <laughs> i know yeah. you all are just like amply excited about that oh yeah <laughs> i can i can see everyone just jumping out of the video right now mm. <laughs> with, with all this so, so which is why we're going to switch it up switching yeah. it up all right let's talk pinball here a moment mm. um let's actually start with the cabinet stuff jared mm, okay so interesting things have been happening and popping up first interesting thing is this one's screwed i feel bad for this uh people that have been buying their at games legends pinball from i believe sam's Cl sam's club online sam's Cl yep they're getting one box it's a two box shipment yeah box one is. of two and box two of two yes box number one is the play field box number two is the back glass yes. now when things were starting to ship initially sometimes you know they'd get the box one of the boxes and then maybe two days later get the other box yeah, not always right. were they being delivered on time but with the one that's from sam's club if i'm remembering what i'm read correctly they're getting only that one box. They only had a tracking number for that one box. And when they contact Sam's Club and say, hey, where's my other box? Sam's Club goes, no, mm -hmm. we only had one box. And <laughs> there's no way of getting you a second box. We don't have a second box to even send you. If you're not happy with your purchase, feel free to return it. What? Return the playfield? <laughs> the massive playfield box? Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you, or, or you can hold on to your box. You'd have your box. <laughs> I mean, it's like, thanks. What? And, 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 I, and from what I understand, you know, they've been contacting Ad Games. Ad Games is like, we don't understand either. We don't know why they're doing this. And unfortunately, there's not really a way for us to correct it because retailers purchase and then are responsible for their own stock stock yeah so what have they done to with to box two of two i don't know it's the weirdest thing i'm like i feel really bad for these people because you know that obviously they, pre they pre-ordered and then yeah know, waited all this time and yeah <laughs> that's terrible yeah it's totally messed up i i it's, it's, you can't use it you can't it needs the headbox. That's well, where somebody the says, um, somebody goes, somebody goes, well, you can still use it. It doesn't need the headbox to run. You just don't get your second screen. Mm, yeah. and not exactly what you purchased is, you know. Yeah. Gee, I tell you what. Yeah. it's. I don't know what sort of consumer protection laws you've got over there in the, in the US, but over here, that would be straight to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, ACCC. I think that's what it stands for. And it's like, yeah, this product is not fit for purpose. And yeah. very quickly, you would get a response from Sam's Club or insert vendor here saying, oh, well, very, very, very sorry. So oh, we'll fix that up for you. Um, because you know, when, when someone opens an HCCC claim against you here in Australia, it's $20,000. Mm. 
So yeah, you you pay attention pretty fast. Yeah, it was either Sam's Club or Walmart. They're the they're the same corporation. Um, oh, Sam's, that's, Club, okay. Sam's Club is kind of Costco. Oh, okay. As opposed right, to Walmart right. being, you know, just the big box store. Um, mm-hmm. But I believe, yeah, it was that. So that was, that's what's going on over there. That's really messed up. Um, that's terrible. Yeah. I really feel sorry for those folks. Uh, then on the Arcade One up front, uh, you know, pre orders still scarce. You know, they, they yeah. pop up and they're gone within like three hours. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody just floods the site and they're gone again until who knows when. But somebody had posted. Uh, they went to go do pre-order at GameStop, and mm-hmm. GameStop said, first off, it said, expected shipment delivery date, November. Which is like, <laughs> what? Right. But that's what they did. Anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Tell your story. Yeah. yeah. Basically, they're just covering their butts on that front. They are. Totally. Then, here, yeah. check this out. So, now GameStop, initially, when they put Star Wars on sale, 550 bucks. Yeah. Then GameStop saw that Best Buy was selling Marvel for six hundred, and GameStop went, "Yeah, Star on. Wars. That's six hundred dollars. That's what that is. That's what that is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, now with what then when they posted their image from GameStop, the pre-order price seven hundred ninety-nine dollars. What? what? <laughs> I mean." Two hundred dollar markup? Why? That's a jump. That's a jump. <laughs> right. Far and, out. and here's the thing: everybody's going. Well, you know, if you've if you've noticed, lumber costs are through the roof. They're going sky mm. high. Okay, I get that. I understand that. Um, it's a little messed up though if the manufacturer has not raised the MSRP uh, yeah. or made any announcement about raising the MSRP, which you would expect to have seen from Arcade One Up if that was the case. But yep. more to the point. This thing's built out of MDF. Yeah, it's MD- glue and sawdust. Yeah, it's glue and sawdust. It's the uh, byproduct of, of wood. wood. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I don't think the cost of sawdust has gone up. <laughs> well, who knows what the market on sawdust is? You know, if everyone is producing these sort of cabinets, it could have actually had a premium slept on it. It's supply and demand, Chris. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> So I'm very curious to see how that shakes out. Uh, like I said, mm. it, it popped up. I saw the the person's post. I saw the image. Um, I clicked on the link to verify for myself. Not that that matters because then when I went to GameStop, the pre-order was already gone, so I couldn't verify that way. Uh, yeah. But shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans, all right. Well, you know, I think all that says is just don't buy from GameStop or just wait a little bit until things settle down i know waiting for things is hard it is and it sucks it really sucks particularly when you're expecting these things like christmas time and you know we're in april nearly may now but i don't know i'd be sort of just holding my dollars for now and just either waiting until supply improves and you can see them in shops and actually work out whether it's right for you or not um, cause it's even at games is going to be like putting the legends pinball into shops around June, allegedly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so just wait until it goes into shops and just see it and touch it and feel it and see what you reckon and look at the boxes, or, make sure there's two there <laughs> or buy directly from the manufacturer. Cause well, if yeah, you bought straight you, from you, at games, well, if they only sent you one box, they're going to send you the other box. I mean, that's exactly <laughs> right. You, know. you can order directly from, um, RK one up as well. Correct. Well, are they only going through? <laughs> no, because they're only going through retail. Well, currently, because they don't have, they don't have stock. It, everything has been pre-ordered. There's nothing uh, that has gone. Nothing has even seen stepped foot into a retail space. Right, right. Um, they're all being done through pre-orders. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, you know, Mel was hoping, you know, that that maybe Arcade One Up could. Uh, ramp up production somehow. Um, you know, yes, yeah. he's, he's got connections, but he's not Arcade One Up. He's he's Zen. Zen's not responsible for the hardware. So that's right. Um, but it does make me okay. So Jared, so what knowing can, what you we... know, knowing what you know now, your hmm. initial prediction, you felt that there was going to be a let's not even call it Wave Two because Wave Two to me means it's the same product, just the, you know the next wave of 
of it incoming, as opposed to generation yeah. two, which is when there's been an actual physical change to the, the system, machinery, like a yeah, right, yeah, you know, with you know whether it's you know adding Wi-Fi, adding a second screen or a third screen, um, yeah, any of that. So knowing that your initial prediction was that this holiday, this Christmas, um, we'd be having basically a Gen two machine out there. Yep. With this news, what's your prediction now? So with this news and stock availability, you mean? Yes. Um, well, I definitely think they've got a fair bit of catching up to do. And I think that from the looks of things, like just to see how scarce these things are, and we're in April, I don't know if that prediction is correct anymore. I think they're going to actually be hard-pressed doing any any hardware or software revision to this. Maybe Maybe a software revision with a like an update to fix bugs and stuff maybe but a hardware revision i don't think we're going to see it this year yeah i'm gonna like say the, the the soonest you'll see anything is 2022 christmas you reckon they're gonna just play it safe and do it that would probably make sense because like the you can't get you can't get screens no. and chips are in short yeah. supply yeah so they're going to be hard pressed actually getting the equipment they need just to service all these pre-orders it seems so you know i think yeah i think we can throw that idea of a wave two out this year um i don't think it's going to happen what i think you... we might start seeing more available in retail stores at christmas i think they might do that yes but i i don't think i think that will probably happen yes like i think this christmas i will them. see one at costco yeah, I think I might too here in Australia. Now, for the record, in Australia, you can still buy these. So there was a shipment delivered down here, and there's a website down here called um, Arcade Gamer, and they have in stock available now um, Arcade One Up Star Wars Pinball for one thousand two ninety nine Australian. Um, yeah, that's just the, that's just the regular Australian <laughs> markup on that. In fact, that's that's cheaper than I thought because I thought it was going to be one thousand four hundred. Right. So hey, look, saving some money. In fact, it's. It's actually been marked down. It's an April promo. So it was $1,399. It's now $1,299. So bargain. They're actually marking him down down here in Australia. So Well, let know. me ship it from there then. <laughs> well, yeah. It's look free delivery on orders over $200. So <laughs> <laughs> off you go, America. Have fun with that. <laughs> so, yeah, you can buy that. And I think they've actually got um, the... Uh, they've got... Yeah, they've got Marvel... Star Wars and Attack from Mars, and let me see if Attack from Mars is available. Yep, yeah, you can get that down here too for a discount for one thousand two hundred ninety nine pennies. So there you go. Um, Basically you... free, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of? We'd asked Mel in episode two twenty our interview with him. Uh, mm. We'd asked him about the software updating. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know, know what like... was your what was your did you feel like he was doing the uh, the old Farsight, yeah, that'd be nice? Or do you think uh, there's some intention behind there? <laughs> I th No, I definitely think that it's going to happen because they, they're they fully aware of the bugs. They know that um, there's, there's problems with Whitewater um, and there's a few other bugs in there that they've also been made aware of that the, that the community has told them about. And, you know, Mel did say in the interview that, um, you know, they just need to get the bugs together, fix them all in one hit, and then submit the patch because the whole patch process, that costs money. And the only reason why it costs money is that you need to develop the patch, test it, right. then roll it down to a package that you can actually you know, have consumers plug a drive into their thing and go, here's my update, right? Yeah. And I, I it's really... got to be foolproof. You don't reckon I'm... it's going to happen? No, I reckon that... I think that they will do a patch to uh, address Whitewater. Mm -hmm. um, because, I again, not having played the machine myself, I can't... It's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? I can't yeah. tell what is going on with, with Whitewater, but enough people have complained about Whitewater to, mm. to the point that obviously it's severe and noticeable. Um, yeah. So I think that that will get addressed. But mm -hmm. when it comes to, are they going to let us have, uh, you know, contrast and brightness control over the screen? Or are we going to be able to, uh, what was the other thing that we'd, we'd mentioned with, uh, oh, the uh, nudge sensitivity? Will that be adjustable? Addressed. Uh, addressed. 
I don't know. I really don't. I don't know about that. That's where I kind of think that that arcade one up might just go. It's fine. That's what that's what waste, this, that's what generation three is for. <laughs> yeah. Well, there there is actually a uh, I've read on I think it was the arcade one up pinball group on Facebook. Like there's so many of them, you got to oh, know. know well which one. But there was one that said there is actually a secret menu you can access on the pinball machines that allows you to go in and check calibration and stuff like that. It's essentially it's because the system's based on an Android system on a chip build. You can go in and access a like a, a service menu that's separate to the game that allows you to calibrate the screen and the accelerometer and that sort of stuff oh, as interesting. well. Interesting. I did not know that. So you can it's like you gotta it's like the classic, you know, hold hold select and start and hold your you know, stand upside down and that's, it's a bit of a contortion to do it. It's a Konami code. And uh... <laughs> it is definitely a Konami code to to actually access it and do it. But it does bring up a essentially like a hardware calibration menu and i'm pretty sure that that's what arcade one up do in the factory to actually calibrate the the game they open up in this menu they do the final calibration on it and they ship it but yeah so you you do have that access to that menu now go and have a look on how to do it and if you think you need to access that you can get in touch with arcade one up and they can give you instructions if you're having trouble with accelerometers etc you can do it so if you are experiencing that now as a person who owns one, uh, get in touch with them. You probably already have, and they probably already told you about this. So there you go. Um, and if and if people do, like can't find these instructions, let me know, and I'll see if I can go trawling through Facebook and and find the post that has it. It's, it was a while back now, so it's probably gone. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, uh, um, something else that people have been peppering us with questions about. And mm. I think that we let's have a crack at speculating ourselves. Um, okay. The eleven tables that Mel mentioned before the yeah. end of 2020. Uh, yeah. Let's wipe off two because that was the Mandalorian and uh, Star Wars collectibles was part of that Correct. count. So nine. Let's count nine. Nine um, tables. What's your best guess? How do you think? these are going to get into people's hands prior to pinball effects launching. I think, well, if they're not going to be releasing the core pinball effects until l- later on, probably yeah. we're, we're thinking last quarter at this stage, right? Like, I'm that's definitely our... thinking last quarter, the, but yeah. you, you kept on saying end of the year. And I think that was just your version of saying last quarter. And yeah, now I'm almost totally like right. in my head, I'm almost going, you know what? Jared might be right. It might be like November. <laughs> November. It will, could be. Like, I don't know. But the only way I can see them releasing any new content now is, and Mel confirmed this in the interview, that essentially like the Williams pinball platform is now essentially locked. Yes. Like it's not going to get any new content in it. Correct. So that, that's not a way that you'd be able to see new content. So if they're going to be releasing 11 tables this year some like you could think that some of those are going to be packaged with pinball effects which is reasonable to assume but it sounded like to me that mel was suggesting that we're going to see actual content releasing before pinball effects is coming out correct so i mean obviously 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 the star wars those two star wars tables are going to be via vr so there's yeah that's right there's, there's one. two. But he yeah, wasn't yeah. saying that it was going to be 11 VR tables prior to the end of the year. No. And I mean, that's the only announced thing that they're releasing. So you could you have to assume that they're going to be doing, I don't know, something on mobile, I guess. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it going to be mobile? But he also said, and, and you got to realize, we actually got him to talk about mobile before he was ready to talk about mobile because... They had said mm. they weren't going to talk about mobile until second half of 2021. Mm. Um, yeah, so we kind of we kind of got him to yeah turn. we got him to spill a few beans on that. But Couple. even if even if you're waiting until second half of 2021 to talk about mobile, well, that puts you past July. Again, yeah, that's right. no new content. That's a that's a big gap. Um, yeah, three months. But you're right. I do think that it's possible that they would be standalone apps on mobile. But could they? I'm wondering, could they do standalone 
DLC on uh, on Epic Game Store prior to like a oh like a like a like, one off app sort of thing. Yeah, I guess they could. Um, they could release like a little yeah mini app. Well, well yeah, they could. I mean, because because then what I'm wondering is if and I and I gotta believe that Zen's thinking the same way. Whatever mm. gets released prior to Pinifex is going to, that's going to grandfather in to Pinifex. Yeah, that's right. So everything that was released up to this point, Mel is referring to legacy. Yes. As legacy. So everything that was done and out available publicly now, except for Star Wars Pinball uh, VR, is legacy. So yeah. um, anything from now on, I think. You're going to see that in in pin effects, right? We so let's say they came out with let's say they came out with in. you know Operencia pinball. I mean, yeah, we, right. we've been yeah. saying Operencia Castle Storm and uh, Disco uh, Dodgeball. You keep on saying Disco Dodgeball, but now it's I'm gotta saying, Now I'm saying Dreadnoughtical. But anyway, Dreadnoughtical. Yeah, yeah. Because those are the three most recent games that Zen has done. Obviously, they've got all the art assets. It, it only makes sense, you know, integration, synchronicity. Um, yeah. So let's yeah, let's yeah. let's let's use those titles as our examples. So yep. suddenly Zen comes out with a pack of those three, right? Mm -hmm. And releases as a standalone app. Uh, yep. You know, it's it's the Zen RPG pinball pack. It's <laughs> the Zen Indies. Zen Indies pack. Zen Indies pack, right. Yeah. And yeah. could we see that on mobile? Sure. Would make yep. sense. Because especially since we now know that it's being used with Unity, um, that's what they were building Williams with that's what they built Williams with, yeah. Right. Um, that's a good question. Are they going to? Con I don't. Mm, I don't hmm. see a reason why they would use Unity on mobile when they could use um, Epic um, on mobile as well. Using Unreal, compatible. So yeah, here's Unreal, something sorry. to think about. Apple is in a big old giant fight with Unreal right now. Yeah, that's right. They're not the best buddies, are they? No, they're not the best buddies. And Zen doesn't want to necessarily be caught in the middle of that little mm -hmm. war. It's not their fight. No. So I almost wonder if maybe that's why we haven't heard anything about mobile, that maybe Zen mm -hmm. is waiting for the dust to settle, maybe thinks the dust is going to settle soon. And if it goes the way of Apple saying, nope, screw you, Epic, we will not be carrying any game that runs Unreal, um, Unreal. Then Zen goes. All right, Unity it is. <laughs> yes, that's right. We've already got a. We've already got a build that works. So let's uh, let's use Unity, I guess, on mobile. Which would suck because they're again they'd have another platform. Like Mel said, they don't like platforms. Um, that's right. Or multiple, multiple, multiples. So okay, let's say then, let's say the dust settles, and right. it goes the way of. Apple saying, okay, fine, we've made a deal with Epic. Unreal it mm. is. And then, so Zen says, yay, and they release a mobile app of these Zen Indie pinball. Yeah. So then what I'm saying is on the Epic Game Store, they would release Epic Indie pinball also. And it would be, be basically your first taste of pinball effects without all the bells and whistles. In other words, it would just mm. be the tables and a leaderboard, probably. That's it. Probably. It wouldn't yeah. have challenges. It wouldn't have, you know, a uh, friend score. It would just be an, its own isolated little thing. And then when Pinball FX actually comes out proper, that then I would assume that Zen would say, and you can link that because yeah, it's yeah. the same engine, it's the same... You know, I definitely think that, that that would be a thing. Like they wouldn't release a standalone thing and then get people to buy it again. Like that wouldn't make sense. They would definitely port it over into um, the uh, the core app essentially uh, when it comes out, particularly on on PC. But it makes me wonder if they're going to be doing a um, an Epic Games Store release then. Where does that leave console? Like, uh, console going to be left waiting, or would they get the same release as well? Like, 
how how do you think that would work? I don't know. Because <laughs> mm. um, you, you can imagine, mm. like, it'd be... Because Zen's been very upfront about saying, look, we want to support all platforms day-date of yeah. launch or product launch. So for them to do that, they would already have to be going, hey, we're going to publish on all these platforms. And hey, well, I mean, which is not unreasonable to assume because they they do that now. But that's a lot more engineering, planning, entitlements, management, how you do that, you know, on console versus something like Epic Games Store, um, which may, may be easier to manage like cross buy entitlements on. Well, here, you know how they could do it then. I'm just thinking this. What if they did, um, what is, what, doesn't, uh, doesn't Google have a, like a, a what's it, Google Play or something like that? Yeah, yeah, they do. Where it's just you pay your fee and then all these games are there. Right. Oh, that's some um, Google like all access, a little bit like uh, Apple's uh, Arcade Pass. Right, Arcade yeah, Pass, yeah. and uh, obviously Xbox has their Xbox Game, Game Pass. Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be a way to let the consoles play. True. If you were paying that, so then you'd be able to have access to it to pay, leading up to then when Pinball Effects comes out. That's so it's true. almost like it's almost like a a soft launch beta, maybe. Yeah, that's true. That's an option. They could do that. Yeah, that, that I, would I be a way around the I was thinking about that too. I was thinking about with Pinball Royale. I was like, are they really going to wait until Pinball Effects comes out to throw that to everybody, or mm. is that going to get its own soft launch and then just like it's like all these disparate parts swirling around in a whirlpool and eventually they're going to funnel down into pin effects. I guess the I guess the question is about Pinball Royale is how core is that thing to Pinball Effects? Like oh, yeah. is that going to be like is that going to be something that's actually like essentially built built around Pinball Effects or you know it sort of like Pinball Effects is like a it's a core requirement of it or Will it almost be like a standalone app? Like, is it going to be a separate stream? Because, you know, like, I remember how Mel was saying that, you know, they're looking at different revenue models and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's, would they be using something like Pinball Royale as like a, a way of introducing people to Pinball or something like that? Like, I, I don't know if that's a thing that they do, but if they were to do that, then we might actually see it earlier. I keep on coming back with Pinball Royale. I really do think that they're going to lean on Epic and it's going to mm. be very much a hybrid between uh, Rocket League and Tetris 99. I think You're, those you are I think those are t- your two touch points that it's mm. going to be taking a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B and mashing them together. Now, Tetris 99 yeah. obviously is its own beast. Mm. But Rocket League very much depends on you downloading Rocket League as a whole. So right. you're right. It might be too integrated into Pinball Effects to be a separated out Separate. app. Yeah, it, it may be. It might, it might rely too much on the core engine to do it. Although, if I understand where Zen's vision is going with this... It sounds like pinball effects is like a base platform and then everything else gets sort of put on top of that. Yeah. So maybe they could actually like take essentially pinball or pinball effects base and then add the the Royale layer on top and then add other stuff on top and sort of um, separate it out like that. Huh. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, but there's lots of possibilities it seems. Like if just talking about it now, there's plenty of different ways I could go with this. There are. Yeah. So, okay, let's let's go back into our, our hypothetical game pack. Yeah, okay. When let's let's say hypothetically that's after the the Star Wars VR comes out, which by the way, folks, c- comes out uh this, this week. week? <laughs> oh yeah, this week. Yeah. This yeah. week. Um, it's happening. 
And because like Mel said, they want to have it out ready for May 4th. May the 4th. May yeah. the 4th be with you. So, um, so our hypothetical game pack, when do you think, when do you think the earliest we would see it? So the, the Zen Indies yes. pack. Yes. Okay. Well, they would have let, they'd obviously want to let the hype from Star Wars pinball settle. Yeah. So I reckon give that two months and then we'll maybe see something happening. So you're so saying maybe June, I reckon. Like end of June, beginning of June? Well, let's just say June at this stage. Oh, party pooper. <laughs> I'm going to say we're not going to see new content or the earliest that we'll see new content. I'm going to say late June. Late June. Late June. And the latest that we'll see new content. Uh, that's not VR. This is what I'm saying. That's not VR content. Just regular flat screen right. 2D. Yeah. Just because yeah. I don't want people going, ha, you were all wrong. It came out on April 29th. No. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. this, eliminate the VR platform. We're trying to figure out where are these other tables going to drop uh, mm -hmm. beyond VR. Uh, at the latest, I would say, so I said, for me, the earliest would be late June. I'd say at the latest, late July. So somewhere between June and July, you think? I think it will be... Because if you went I late it... July and then you went with the cadence of tables that Zen's going to want to put out, um, like he said, they want to put out 20 a year. Uh, mm. Pretty much 2022 would be a year of having 20. Well, if you put out late July, skip a month, so three, uh, skip a month to uh, September, there's now you're up to six, skip a month to November, now you're up to nine. And then they'll do some Well, but stuff there's nine, and then there was the two that were with Pinball VR. Uh, that's with 11. Star Wars, that's 11. So then there's just one more left over. No. No, because the, no, it's those, oh, no, are the, right. those are the nine plus the two that are the the Mandalorian and uh, Star Wars collectibles. That that 11. makes eleven. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so that, I mean that's what I'm saying. If you went that to late July, skip the month, you know, so every other month you would have a release of of tables. Yep, that would actually that would work out. So I think we probably both agree that it would be July. It's just when it drops in July would be. The, the time that we do it. Well, I'm saying that's the latest that we'll see anything. Mm. I think the earliest that we'll see anything after this Star Wars VR would be, I'm saying, you're saying June, I'm saying late June. I reckon that uh, in the, uh, unfortunately, we're, we're a touch out of sync with um, the pinball show this this time around. Um, we really have to work with Zen to get in sync better, <laughs> don't we? So that we can they synchronize to, they to, it. They really need to work with Jared's schedule. I really do. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it will make it a lot easier. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> so I don't think if, if we're thinking of how they would roll this out from a marketing and, and promotion perspective, I don't think that they might, they might, if this was the strategy they were going with, we might hear an inkling of it in the pinball show number four. And then in TPS five, we will get probably an announcement about it. So that would be April was TPS four, which is coming up this week, I think. Um, and then TPS five is in May, which you could say probably they might either go with the announcement and then release in June, or they might hold it over the, the month and then go July if we're looking at the other timeline. So, Because again, uh, thinking about Zen when they make an announcement versus when you're able to purchase it, Typically, it's been about a month. It's about a month. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit different this year. Yes. They've had to stretch things out a little bit more this year. Yeah. But generally speaking, and given that they're actually like doubling their pinball division, um, essentially, you know, they they have the, they will have the capability. I'm not necessarily they saying that they've got it right at the moment because they're still recruiting. Yeah. Um, but when they do get up to that that desired level of staff and capability, then we will be able to see probably monthly releases, probably, if they wanted to do monthly releases. Because um, if you think about it, if 
if they're, they're shooting for 20 a year, right? Mm. 20 tables, right? So that's going to be like maybe a three pack every other month. Yeah. If you, if you sort of do the math on it, which has been up until the pandemic hit, kind of what they were shooting for with all their Zen originals and stuff like that. Well, right? I was going to say three pack every month, but then now and then if you have a licensed table that can't be packaged with anything else, then they would get its that's own. That's an uh, own special release, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that would be the other, the off month that they'd be um, yeah. like putting those out. So yeah, if they sort of start to get back into that, essentially using 2021 as a bit of a, a year to kind of get back into that swing of things and get the studio back up into like releasing content on a semi-regular basis again. That would make sense from the timings that we suggested, I think. Yeah. All right. What do you think will, when we see another Williams table? This year. Or pack. Yeah, this year. Um, I think. Do we think think we're going to see alphanumeric or are we going to see DMD? Because, again, knowing that the rating... (laughs) Is not going to be an issue. Okay, let's eliminate Cactus Canyon because, like we said, that one's really hard to find. But that it, leaves it two is. that have not been done. Uh, who done it? And yep. uh, 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 Jackpot. Both of which right. were problematic on the gambling front. And there was like I think smoking and stuff in Who Done It? Maybe. Sure, maybe. I'm not. I don't know Probably. for certain, but. So when we see machine, when, that's definitely a slot machine. Definitely got a slot machine, there, right? Which is so a problem. that's what I'm asking. What are we more likely to see? Are we more likely to see those two, or are we more likely to see alphanumeric as the next uh, Williams release? Hmm. Williams well, they invested. Yeah. They've invested the cash in in alphanumeric now, and they've got to make it back. So I reckon we might actually see alphanumerics coming out. I I'm think. kind of there with you. I'm kind yeah. of there with you. I th- I think that that's probable. I think they need to get the <laughs> the cost on on the amount of time they've had to put into getting the the alphanumeric tech yeah sorted out. They'll be probably releasing a fair few of those. I think yeah in maybe maybe not this year, but I would I would expect that early into 2022. Well, look, we're I, you know see what? a lot of a lot of alphanumeric content. I out. honestly think once the once the the wheels get rolling again. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a Williams pack, a Zen Originals pack, a Williams pack, yeah, I... a Zen Originals pack. I think they're going to get with this influx of of artists and designers that they've been hiring. It's going yeah. to let them to do that because, as we've said before, those Zen Originals, those are much more profitable for them. They may yeah, not the, sell as yeah. many, but they're way more profitable for them. Yeah, they don't have to worry about licenses. Well, they don't have to worry about licenses if they're not creating Zen original license tables. Because you know they could go and create a like a, a brand Zen table. That's not sure, but you're, but you're not having to pay Williams or Scientific True. Games on top of that's right that, and you'd be striking those licensing deals now. Yes. Um, rather than Not trying, trying to, to track down spending lawyer fees, because believe me, yes. folks, the lawyer fees, they're, they're they charge heavy. by the minutes. <laughs> they charge by the minutes. Uh, uh, yeah. and again, going back to the conversations that we used to have with Bobby King at Farsight, um, he, as he said, the, the most difficult part of licensing was tracking down the IP the holders people who own the licenses. and then getting your lawyer to talk to their lawyer to hammer out the deal and how quickly could any of that be hammered out? Um, yeah. So the the fewer amount of time spent with the lawyers, the better. The better for everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's why we were saying it, it's much more profitable for Zen to strike new licensing deals for a Zen original um, mm-hmm. than it is to... Try and go back and again, you know, secure the property, secure the voice talent, all you know, all that other stuff. Because Zen can control all of that. With yeah, they don't have to essentially go. Well, we'd like to do this game. How much do we have to pay you? It's more like we we'd like to do this game. Let's cut a deal. Like well, the language mention, is totally well, different. Like what Mel said, he goes, he's got licensors knocking on their door. That's a they, good they position because just... that means you're in. You mm-hmm. got the leverage. 
yeah, it's like so. You, oh, you, so you want a game? Well, here's how much we want to pay for your license, um, or how much are you going to pay us to produce <laughs> the game for you with the license? I'm That's dying the other side to of it know too. what because Mel has dropped hints. If you go to his personal Twitter feed, not Luzen's or Pinball Effects' Twitter feed, but just yeah. Mel's. Um, Mel underscore G underscore Kirk. Exactly. His handle. Now and then, he'll all of a sudden post a tweet that'll be like, I'm so excited, I can't believe this finally <laughs> yep. came through. And then that'll be it. And you're like, yep. what? What What have you been working on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but those are the ones that I always go, hmm, flag that for <laughs> later on. Postmark that tweet for speculation. It's six or eight months down the track saying, ah, so that's what the big deal was, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. Well, we're always, it's what we do. Yeah. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where that uh, where that all goes. Uh, Jared, was there yeah. anything else that you wanted to uh, kind of crack the speculation can open on? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think on the VR side of things, I would like to probably hope that there's going to be more VR content this year. I mean, surely once they release Star Wars Pinball VR, I would suggest that we're going to see more content being added to that. I think they'd be mad not to um, because there's so many good like Star Wars tables out there that aren't in that collection. There's eight in there. And like, what were we like over nearly? We were at 20. Wait, no, we were at 19 because uh, that's what was on the uh, Switch. 19 yeah. tables and then plus the two that got announced. So they, there's plenty of room in that particular app to add more content and bring more tables into VR, which would delight me. I I, I would love to play more of this content in VR. It, like, freshens up, it freshens it up so much, like playing it in VR. You know, I, I hope everybody caught what Mel was saying too with the difference between Zen doing VR and... Uh, Magic Other. Pixel with Zachariah Pinball doing VR yeah. that the licensors consider VR an entirely different contract. Yeah. And that's it's why they separate. can't just flick a switch. Flick the switch. Yeah. 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 It's very different. I mean, in the case of Magic Pixel, they essentially own everything for like Zachariah Pinball. They can do what they like with that. Right. Because there was um, no licensed Zachariah table that that that's right a third that's party right. license all... i should say mm, that's right in fact a lot of them knocked off a lot of themes and alluded to them um <laughs> uh, but you know in classic italian style uh <laughs> when they were doing all these games like karate and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yep so you know when you're bringing in licenses into the discussion here they they don't just want like oh yeah my game in with the rest of the other ones they want like they, they want that Star Wars experience. Like, imagine what you could do with the Marvel stream with that. Like, oh, <laughs> the mind boggles at just how good a Marvel VR experience would be with all the Marvel content they've got. And there are some tables in there that do need VR because mm -hmm. they're a little bit on the hard side to see. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's another untapped market, which I would put some money down speculatively to say that we might see a Marvel VR package next year. I would um, say that's going to be the next big pack. And I think that, that it'll be uh, also coming to Switch as a standalone game. I imagine the two would be announced at the same time. It'd be... So Marvel for Switch and Marvel VR. And, and Marvel for VR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Because that, that's the only... I mean, people are gagging for Marvel on Switch. They want it so bad. Yeah. So, yeah. I reckon you're right. They will they will do a consolidated launch on Marvel on both platforms. Yep. But they'll need to do some. I mean, I think some of those tables do need a bit of work. Like uh, they could do with a bit of spit and polish at the same time. Oh, sure. Um, so, you know, why not? Like, look, at, like do what they did. I think what they did with um, this first round of VR tables for Star Wars, they, they literally picked the eyes out of the collection with maybe, you know, <laughs> the exception of some of those tables <laughs> in, <laughs> in there, Masters of the Force. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, in most cases, they they chose them deliberately because they knew that it would be 
the best fit for VR upfront and that you, would promote the platform. You know right. what's funny is I keep on hearing people say, you know, we always rag on Masters of the Force. It's our least favorite. Yeah, we do. It's our yeah. least favorite Star Wars table, hands down, and it's one of my least favorite Zen tables, hands down. Yeah. Um, you know, that and V12, they can go suck it. Um, <laughs> they really can. <laughs> but I've, I've heard, heard a lot suck. of people, mm-hmm. they're excited to play Masters of the Force in VR because they are hopeful it'll improve the experience. Yeah, it's... It is a weird looking table, and I think having the having those layers in VR is going to help it out a lot. Yeah. Um. So it will be interesting. Maybe I'll change my tune on it when I get to play it in VR. Um. I don't know, but hopefully, um, hopefully we'll see more content in that package because it will be very nice to play more VR content, Star Wars VR content. I think. All right. Well. Look, we haven't had a good proper just uh, wing it and speculate episode in quite a while. We haven't. We've actually had hard news to deliver. And so, yeah, it's been fun to sort of go back and sort of think a little bit more between the lines and and talk about some of these things and what might happen to this year. So it's good that we get to speculate again. Absolutely. Um, I I want to, and I'm sure Jared feels the same way, uh, big thanks to everybody that... uh, has been viewing our content, subscribing to the content. Um, you guys have really helped grow the show, and it helps open up the eyes of uh, other people to help us maybe get interviews with. Um, certainly, I know that Mel appreciates it. It's why he comes on our show, part of the reason. Um, yep. Just because he understands what what the audience expects out of him and what he can deliver to them rather than just a yeah. general mass. So I just That's want to right. say again, thank you. You guys have really been uh, rock stars with just how much of our content you view. Um, you know, we get all the statistics and uh, yeah. I've, you know, heard other sites, what they, what their content statistics, statistics are. And I'm like, damn, we got a good, we got a good following. So just yeah, big shout out to you guys. Yeah. Uh, and again, thanks for putting up with, the the medium shift to now us having the proper blockade pinball dot com <laughs> URL. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's good to actually have a proper place on the internet now and not have to sort of like use another platform. Because the thing is that when you use another platform, you have no control over it. But yeah. now I have total control over the site and what we can do with it. And if I need to change the theme going down the track, I just switch the theme and do a little bit of changing here and there and we've got a brand new website up. So it's far more maintainable now. Yeah. And I think, I hope that you, you'll you see the difference and actually want to go to the site and get updates and things. There's even like, we've got the Discuss system um, plugged into the site now. So you can actually comment on each each show post if you want and feed, give us feedback that way. So there's more ways to reach out to us now. The so, uh, yeah. yeah, and I mean, the usual ways, email us, blah, blah, blockade at gmail.com. Hit us up mm-hmm. on our Twitter. It's mine right there, and uh, Jared's mm-hmm. right there, um, or the show proper right there um, yeah. at Blockade. Uh, you know, let us know what do you want us to speculate on. Let us know uh, topics of discussion. If there's something that you've heard that you uh, wondering if we know anything more about, if we know anything more about it, we'll try and uh, comment on it and and talk about it. Uh, next time, obviously, the latest. The Pinball Show will have aired, so I'm sure that we'll have stuff to discuss about that. But otherwise, it's what Jared likes the most. Stuff and things. See you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.